Hi, welcome everyone. Mics are good, all right. Uh, I would like to encourage everyone just at the door, we have plenty of seats available. So if you would like to just make yourself comfortable. Um, thank you very much for all of you who joined me on this very last session, just right before the booth crawl. Um, I will try not to bore you to hell. Um, my name is Ildi Kovanca, I'm working for Ericsson. And uh, first of all, let me bore you a little bit uh, about my experience with OpenStack and what I am doing, just so that you know what you can expect. Um, I started to contribute to OpenStack, well, more than two and a half years ago. I have to tell you that I was a very eager young puppy, and I'm still very eager, that's for sure. Uh, I started with uh, Bitsilometer, um, which was uh, already a core module in OpenStack, but it was a smaller one. So I had an easier job to how to approach the project and I, I already had uh, a plan in my mind and a request from the company that what feature they would like to uh, see. Uh, in that project in the next release. So you could think that I, I had a quite easy job to do, but it actually wasn't. Uh, it took three months to uh, increase the code base of Solometer with 2%. Uh, we actually experienced with my colleague a nice minus two uh, on Garrett, which if you're not experienced with Garrett, it actually means that that patch goes into uh, the repository through my dead body. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is that we made it, so the API extension is there. You can use the rich query functionality in the telemetry API, so I'm one of the person who you have to uh, blame for that feature and the API design, which got that nice minus two, but we actually managed to uh, get our ways through. So um, what I can tell you based on this, that really nothing is impossible. You just really should not give up uh, when you meet the first obstacle, uh, because I'm sure that you will face plenty of them. Um, since then, um, I became a core reviewer in Silometer, and um, nowadays I'm at least trying to coordinate the OpenStack related activities within Ericsson. So I have experience and I um, I have the opportunity to, to encourage people and bring them on board and I, I see their success, I see what they are struggling with. So this is partially what inspired uh, me to propose this talk and share all my, all my experience with you um, and uh, help you to uh, find your way uh, into OpenStack. And uh, I'm also involved in uh, cross-project feature development nowadays, trying to get multi-attach volume support in, in Nova, which is, well, the task is ongoing now for five or six release cycles. So Cinder has the feature support partially implemented, as it turned out, since Havana. So we are struggling with a few things, which also gave pretty many lessons uh, to learn. And um, I hope that based on my experiences, uh, you will be even more successful uh, to achieve your goals within OpenStack. So um, I will at least try to guide you through uh, that what can, what can be the possible ways uh, to get a feature, to get an idea into OpenStack, or just simply get yourself into OpenStack, uh, because if you don't already have a feature to, um, to drive, it's really not a problem. So it, it should not stop you from any kind of, in, of an engagement. Um, I will just very quickly uh, guide you through that what kind of tools we are using, just so that everyone uh, is on the same page. And uh, I will talk a little bit about the uh, challenges of uh, cross-project uh, and inter-project feature development. And then uh, give you a short summary um, of all the things that I shared with you. And uh, if I manage to finish in time, then I hope that we can have a bit longer question and uh, answer session uh, at the end 
so that you can you can ask about uh, your your personal struggles, uh, ask for suggestions uh, and help. All right, so where to start? Uh, basically, um, all right, I have to share you one thing at the beginning. I don't, don't like lying. I will not talk about code and uh, technology because where we are, it is a large and very rapidly growing and uh, very quickly changing open source community. So where you are trying to join is, is not a bunch of code. It's not a list of uh, software packages and repositories. It is many thousands of people. So in the, during the Mitaka cycle, I think there were over 2,000 people who contributed any kind of code or documentation into OpenStack. So that's pretty many people. So you, you have to keep in mind that, that you're joining an ecosystem and you will work together with people from all around the globe. So it, it's pretty different from what you can experience within a company. Because when you're, even when you're working for a large and um, geographically distributed company, you can always find the boss of the other person. But in OpenStack, <coughs> you cannot. Or it can happen that, that the other person doesn't even have a boss because he or she is just contributing to OpenStack for fun in his or her free time. And then who to ask that, oh, she's not behaving nice to me and now what to do? So um, you really have to uh, use your social skills or build them uh, in order to be able to uh, part of this community. All right, so as I promised just quickly, uh, if you would happen to be that new to OpenStack, uh, good news is that we are trying to be structured and uh, we are really trying to show you entry points and give you a possibility to follow what we are doing and to be able to join to what we are doing. So we are using tracking tools. Um, Mostly we are using Launchpad, so if you would like to find the bugs and the uh, blueprints, then you can, you can check um, that web interface. And I think currently it's only the OpenStack uh, infra project, which is using Storyboard. Um, we are communicating much in uh, every format, mostly written, uh, but many formats. Um, it's basically, I think it's a larger part of, of the work that you, you will do. Uh, so not exactly the, um, the code development and implementation will be the large chunk of, of something that you need to learn how to do. Um, so basically when you're, for example, trying to introduce a new idea which is more complex, then uh, we usually uh, advertise the mailing list where you can really target uh, more people um, it, on the best way uh, that you can just have. The only thing, or well, multiple things that, that you need to keep in mind regarding um, that media is uh, always tag your, your mails. So in the subject, just give the name of the project or, or give them all if you would like to really talk to everyone. Uh, in the community so that everyone who's using filters uh, in their inbox uh, can um, easily find uh, your mail and so that you can really reach out to everyone to whom you would like to and uh, try to avoid HTML mails because that's kind of the best way to find people who will not like you <laughs> at all. And um, you, will, you can have experience on, on Christmas Eve that someone from the Nova Core team just pings you on IRC without even saying hi that, mm, I see you're using Microsoft Outlook. Good choice, all right? So <laughs> m maybe you would like to avoid this and um, simple uh, plain text-based mails. Uh, work the best on the mailing list. So um, remember this, even you're using Outlook, you can um, configure it to uh, send out plain text mails. Uh, not easy to find, but 
it's manageable. I was able to do that after, I think, one and a half or two years, but I managed to. So now I'm a <laughs> better citizen of this community. Um, if you would like to have more, um, let's say, online communication, we have plenty of IRC channels. So basically, we just flew back to the 20th century and uh, experiencing all the joy of uh, the text-based uh, messaging. But the good news regarding to this is that all the channels on Freenode are logged, including the meeting channels. So this actually means that we do not um, have to worry about the meeting minutes because uh, when you have voice uh, meetings, then meeting minutes are the, the things that kind of just people forget to do, right? So after a meeting, you have no clue uh, that who said what, what decisions were made. Um, in case of OpenStack, you can always read back the meetings. Um, and it is also very important from the perspective of the time zone differences that we have to experience within this community. So um, there might be um, occasions when you just really cannot participate on the meeting because it's 2 a.m. at your time zone. So in this case, it is very, very useful when you can read back the logs, and I al always suggest to, to do so. Um, OK, now I will talk a very tiny little bit about the code. Uh, we are using version control, uh, and we do that in Git. Um, it is very handy. Um, I, I first used Git with, with OpenStack, and I think I learned it within a day. So um, it's really, really not hard to learn. Um, I, will, I would assume that most of you have someone in your uh, close neighborhood who knows already how to use it. So just um, always reach out to people and ask for help if you need to. Uh, we are using Garrett for code reviews. And uh, Garrett is actually the third bullet point uh, on the communication item on the list because we are chatting pretty much uh, with each other on Garrett because um, in, in many projects, the, the blueprint and specification reviews are happening also on Garrett. So that will be the place where you will discuss new ideas with people. And um, also, you will argue about uh, why your code is awesome on Garrett uh, with the core reviewers. Um, so that, that will be pretty much uh, one of the interfaces that you will really use the most. And uh, well, we are trying to uh, ensure that we, are, we care enough about quality, so we try to test as much as possible. And we are using Jenkins, who is our automation friend, to run our test jobs. And uh, Jenkins will also comment on your uh, batch on Garrett and will let you know whether the tests uh, run successfully or not. So uh, pretty useful tool also. Um, I will not talk more about these tools. You can find uh, many, many documentations, um, either on the OpenStack documentation web pages or uh, just in general on Google. Uh, you will also find this uh, figure on, on the slide in uh, the OpenStack developer's guide. So I would like to encourage all of you to start with, with these if you're, if you're not familiar um, with either of, of the tools I just mentioned. All right, so let's assume that now everyone knows all the tools have registered to the OpenStack Foundation and ready to join to our uh, nice and friendly and open community, uh, what to do? So I would assume that those of you who are here and not a manager uh, would like to do cool stuff and hack around and, you know, I have a great idea, let's push it in. And this is what I would like to do. Um, not a surprise that all of us would like to do this but it's not really the best way to be part of an already existing environment because you're, as I mentioned, you're, you're joining a group of people, you, you're joining a team um, which is um, working together, the people in that team to um, 
maintain, uh, enhance, and uh, develop further uh, each and every single module. So um, if you would like to really join OpenStack and not just be someone loud uh, on the side that this feature is really important, why you're not merging it, um, then um, I would like to suggest you um, that try to look for um, for those items which are really uh, which really don't look that fancy but actually will be very very useful for you and will be very very useful also to the community um, because they will see um, that you 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 really care uh, and this is very important because when you're trying to push in a feature then the team also tries to ensure that that you or someone from your team will be around to actually maintain it, fix the bugs that you introduced, because most probably you will. Um, and you will be part of this whole environment to keep all these things together that we have today. And uh, when you're trying to, to fix a bug or when you, you're trying to add a piece of documentation, that will be actually a pretty good competence build up work for you. Um, so also from this perspective, it will be very, very useful. So um, don't think of it as a, as a dirty work because uh, even writing documentation can be very challenging. You can believe me, I wrote the, the administrator guide chapter for uh, telemetry, I don't know, one and a half years ago, 35 pages uh, in the PDF format and um, that was quite a big, a bit of a challenge to get that merged in. And uh, I actually managed to understand uh, many of the parts of the API and, and uh, the behavior of that module just because of writing up that documentation. So never think that those things are, are not useful for you because they, they always are. Code reviews. Um, I already mentioned uh, that we are using Gerrit for code reviews and um, you're all new, so you would think that code review is for core reviewers, right? Because that's their job, and um, this is why they are part of the core team. But it's not true. Um, so being part of the community also means that you take part uh, in the code review activity as well. It will be also competence build up for you because you will learn really, really much about the code base and uh, you will learn much about uh, all those features that, um, that are added uh, to the already existing code base. Uh, you, you might even find bugs just by uh, reading through the changes and trying to understand the code uh, that the author has changed. Um, so it is, uh, again, a really, really good um, task for you to do. So I would like to um, encourage all of you to really take your time and spend your time with code reviews. Uh, this will, uh, just like all the other parts of the dirty work um, section, this will, this will be one of the activities which will show uh, the core team and the contributors around the module that, that you, re you really care, you would really like to participate, uh, your learning, your lessons, uh, you care about that, what kind of changes go into the code base. So uh, when, you're, when you're doing all these activities, uh, including the previously mentioned bug fixes and documentation, um, People, people will recognize your name, you will, uh, you will be visible for the community, and uh, this will help you in pushing features in. So it's again part of, part of the socialization, but it's, it's not about chatting uh, with people on IRC about the weather. Uh, it's actually real coding work, uh, but still, it's, I think, uh, more, a bit more part of, of uh, the social skills because uh, giving good and valuable code reviews, it's really, really not easy. Um, also, when you're uploading a patch and waiting for reviews, you, you have to be patient uh, because the core team is usually very, very busy, especially in case of larger and more complex projects. 
So if someone, so if no one um, looked at your patch within a few days or a week, then just uh, don't panic. It's totally normal. It will happen. But if you if you do code review work, then people will recognize your name. They they know that oh yeah, I know that guy or girl who uploaded that patch. Let's let's look into it. Um, Let's see what uh, he or she has done. Um, so you you will you will get most probably get reviews much much earlier this way. And uh, when you receive a minus one, especially when you're a new contributor, I have to tell you that it is good news. Seriously. So when you receive a minus one, that means that someone finally looked at what you're doing. And uh, obviously, no one is perfect. So. You made mistakes, or even if you if you didn't make mistakes, each and every project um, has their their own guidelines of how they would like to see the code changing and uh, what is their style of writing documentation and uh, adding new things or doing code refactor work. So um, it's minus one is is not not that kind of a critique that you should uh, worry about. It is important to try to respond to the review comment as soon as possible um, because it will again show people that, that you actually care about what you are doing um, and you're really trying to be part of this whole ecosystem and join a, joining a team. Um, and. Uh, try to fix uh, all the issues that, that the others found or just really answer the questions or describe that why you're, you did something in a way that you did. Uh, because if someone added a review comment to your, to your patch, it does not necessarily mean that that person is right. So it will again trigger um, a discussion which will, uh, which will bring you closer uh, to find your way within OpenStack. I, as I as I encourage you now, I, I usually try to encourage people who, who I who I work together with. Um, we Ericsson, we are also cooperating with with the university, and there are there are also several students who who are just trying to find their way uh, within this really really large community, and um, even from from OpenStack, we we usually periodically uh, discuss some, some uh, for us, let's say, weird uh, behaviors. So there are some you should do and you should not do when you're doing code reviews. Um, focus is one thing that is generally true. So don't try to review all the projects within OpenStack because that will just not bring you closer to what you would like to achieve. Uh, so try to focus on either one project or one cross-project feature uh, that you're interested in and try to learn about it as much as possible. You can, you can always uh, download the code from Garrett. Um, actually, the user interface will uh, show you the uh, link um, and the comment that you just kind of have to uh, copy. Uh, and use, and you will have the code on your machine, so you can you can run the tests locally. You can check whether the code uh, is really tested by those test cases that were added, whether the code really fixes the bug or implements the feature that someone tried to uh, achieve. You can uh, always uh, try your code in DevStack. DevStack is our development environment. So when you are lucky and trying to deploy. Um, OpenStack from the master branch and, branch and DevStack is working. Um, it will take you around half an hour, one hour, depending on your uh, networking bandwidth, to uh, clone the repositories and spin up um, live OpenStack on your laptop. And you can play with uh, most of uh, the features that, that are added to OpenStack. And uh, people will be really, really thankful for all your feedback uh, that, that you give um, after trying out their patches. Um, when, you're, when you're giving uh, a minus one, uh, because even, even if you're new, it 
it does not mean that you will not be able to find issues within the code. You, you will always be able to if you, if you read it through carefully and really try to understand what it does. So if you give a minus one, then always follow up the, the patch and what's happening there. Um, because uh, it, is, it is important uh, to always double check whether the author really fixed your issue that you found and then uh, give your plus one uh, and uh, the sign that, okay, from your perspective, the, the patch is good because um, if, you, if you get there to, to join a core team, this is what you will need to do. Uh, actually follow up on all the patches that, that you keep an eye on and, and reviewing. And ask questions. So um, e even if you're new or if you're not new, it, it can happen that, that uh, either the, the author did uh, something in the code change that is just really hard to understand or you just don't know the code base that much or you're just really curious that, that why uh, that change is added in, in a way how it is added. Um, never be afraid to ask questions. You don't have to put a minus one on that patch. Just um, go and get it and uh, highlight uh, the part of the code that you don't understand and uh, put your question there and uh, someone will, will answer. Or if you happen to not get answer uh, on the review, you can, you can always try again on the next uh, patch set of the review or jump on IRC and find the author and uh, ask for cl clarifications. Uh, it is really a little bit of be selfish and try to learn as much as possible. What you should not do, because I'm always trying to encourage people to uh, not be afraid of giving minus ones, uh, because actually minus one will be something that's valuable for the author, uh, because that's, uh, that's kind of, let's say, a real feedback that you check the code, you, you understood, and something is really not good with it. Um, but you should not... Um, jump on the other side and then try to give too many minus ones because I assume that most of you have, have uh, managers and they are uh, sometimes looking for numbers and you would like to show that, yeah, I did, did much of the valuable work and I gave out 30 minus ones yesterday, so I must be awesome. That's not true. So, for example, uh, repeating what Jenkins said, you can do that, but the author uh, was notified through mails. So, you, repeating the Jenkins output is really not valuable, except one case, uh, which is that you check the, the test logs, you found the issue, and you have a suggestion to the author that how the issue in the tests uh, should be um, fixed. That, that's an exception when, when, you can, when you can repeat the Jenkins output, but you're not really repeating the output, but actually giving valuable comments to the author. Also, uh, always give an explanation when you give a minus one. Uh, and uh, try to avoid just to say that, yeah, I agree with the other reviewer, so minus one. It's just, that's not your thought, so don't, don't, repeat, don't repeat others. And as I said, really, really don't work for the numbers and never try to look for the easy reviews. I mean, plus one uh, type of fixes, it's, yeah, it's good, but I would assume that it's really not taking that much time to anyone to learn how to give a Garrett review, and, and these kind of reviews do, don't add anything else to you just to really memorize this process that how to, how to use Garrett itself. So um, even if a patch is, 500 or 1,000 lines long, it does not mean that you should not spend time with it. It will take more time. And um, one thing I know, uh, um, because of my experience, because yes, I'm working for a company too, that managers sometimes, many times, do not really understand that 
what are you doing for a week because you haven't produced much code, not, nothing much happened, so, so what did you do? Try to spend some time and explaining them that why you're doing this and how this will help uh, in your work because uh, they have to understand as well that what they should and could uh, expect from you. And, and, and it's not, not about you, but it is about how this whole community works and what it's like being part of an open source community. Um, and ag again, this will be a very, very good uh, lesson for you. And uh, code reviews is, is something that, that you always should do. Um, all right. Uh, we'll run out of time because I talk too much. So do code reviews because that will be just really, really good for you. All right, um, driving without plans because uh, it can happen that, that you didn't really get clean directions on, on what you should do, just you should, you should get engaged with OpenStack and uh, just do stuff and get visible, but, but, but how to do that? Um, so I have to tell you that I don't have a step-by-step -step plan and a recipe for you because each and every one of you uh, has to find uh, his or her own way uh, to get, get engaged with this community. Um, there are many entry points. So uh, you can find smaller projects to, to engage with just by doing the dirty work or, um, or looking for already started implementations and uh, asking people whether you can join because you're interested in that particular feature. Uh, you would like to learn and uh, speed up the activity by joining the implementation. Uh, all of these things are, are uh, valid entry points. Um, and uh, again, this will require some of the social skills um, of you, so you, you need to be able to communicate with people to, to achieve this. Uh, but I can only recommend you to do so. And uh, what I already mentioned uh, at the review part, try to keep focus because um, OpenStack, well, it, it, it is way more messy and complex than, than the picture on this slide. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's very easy to get really very lost. So you can check the list of the projects. Uh, we have a wiki page for that. You can briefly check uh, the description that what each and every project is trying to do. And you can decide on whether you already have experience with certain areas or you just have interest and you would like to learn something new. Uh, pick one project or pick a cross-project activity which is about to add uh, a new functionality to, uh, to the whole um, software package uh, and try to stick with that and join the activities and uh, talk to the people and get your way in. Because otherwise, if you, if you, if you don't keep focus, then uh, after a certain while, you, you will be a little bit or pretty much under motivated because um, you will not have that many um, successes within the community because you will be visible everywhere, but you will not be visible enough anywhere in order to be able to achieve what you would like to do. So always keep focus, go step by step, and don't have too big expectations. So keep yourself motivated by, uh, by joining that area that, that uh, you're interested in, but don't expect to be a core reviewer in Nova in one month, because even for the most eager people, it takes years at least uh, by now, uh, after six years, uh, that project is just so big and so complex that it's just very, very hard to join. So uh, be aware of uh, that, that this is uh, just not that easy and, and takes time. It takes time for you to learn and it takes time for the community to get to know you, to trust you and accept you. Um, and, uh, we arrive to the, you would think, good news part. When you already have an idea, you have an agenda, or you have a bossy manager who told you that you have to implement this feature within a week. Um, so good news, you know what you want to do. But well, bad news, I still don't have the recipe for you. So um, 
because you still have to find your own way uh, based on your own experiences uh, that how to do things. Uh, what I can suggest you when you're trying to push uh, an idea and a new feature into a code base, don't forget about the dirty work part um, because this is, this is how people will, will be more open to what you're trying to do. And uh, when you're introducing a new idea, um, always think that twice that what, what uh, your use cases are and uh, discuss it maybe with others uh, in your team or, or in your um, company, whether they, they understand clearly uh, what you're trying to do based on the blueprint specification that you wrote up or, or, the, or the mail that you wrote up. Uh, because you need to ensure that others uh, will understand what and why you're trying to do. And if you don't know exactly how to do that thing um, or how to do the exact change in the code base, uh, you can always ask questions. This is why we have a mailing list and this is why we have an IRC channel for each project. You can just jump on and uh, ask questions. Um, from people. If you're doing code reviews, you will most probably know after a certain while that in a given project, who is the expert of which area. So you can uh, target people with specific questions. And uh, this way, you, they will help you how to get your change in, uh, in, in the best way uh, that fits with that project. And it, if that would happen, that your idea really does not fit anywhere, uh, the good news is that it is quite easy to create a new project and create a new repository within OpenStack. Whether it will be part of the big tent at a certain point or not, that's another question. But uh, you can always try out new things. Um, and uh, this can be useful from a perspective as well that uh, by, by today, we have a few very complex modules and we are trying to reduce complexity and not, not increasing it any further. So when, uh, when you have an idea which, which you see that it would, could fit very well as a standalone module, uh, don't be afraid to, to spin up a new project and uh, gather people on events like, like this design summit um, and just do cool stuff. All right, um, in the remaining very few minutes, um, inter-project features. Um, so everything that I, I already described you is true. Um, but what you have to keep in mind specifically in this case, when you're trying to add the new functionality that impacts uh, at least two OpenStack projects, that communication is way more, much, much more important um, than before because you have to ensure that the interfaces between the two projects will fit. And um, unfortunately, I have experience um, or I know uh, people who have experience with trying to implement cross-project features and have some implementation in one project and then after a, a release time it turned out that the other project will not accept at all the changes that, that would be required in order to fit those two things together and that meant actually to just go back to the drawing table and do the whole design from scratch or almost from scratch again. So you would not want to waste a half year or a full year just because you didn't uh, or haven't discussed it with um, the core teams of, of both or all projects uh, which are affected. So I, I can all again suggest to, to have a, uh, a clean description of why and what you would like to do and ensure that both of the core teams or, or all the core teams are, are involved uh, within your proposal and um, you have the right contacts uh, to come up with the best design that you can and you still uh, have to expect that it will take more time than, than you would originally think. So make your managers understand that, that these things not happen that fa fast um, because of all this communication and uh, changes in multiple projects. It's just not easy to get in. But if you, if you 
uh, go further enough with, with socialization and uh, being visible within the community, you will be able to easily get help and um, find the right people to talk to and uh, make your idea um, a reality. It can happen that either you have an idea that, that would require a change in, in, in OpenStack as a whole, or you would like to join a, an already ongoing activity. Uh, we are trying to keep more and more focus on, um, on these changes because it requires uh, much coordination within the project. So now we have cross-project specifications and cross-project uh, liaisons just to keep an eye on this. Um, so if you would like to um, introduce a change like this, then uh, you, will, you will need to introduce your idea in the cross-project uh, specs repository and uh, ensure that all the liaisons and projects who are affected um, are notified and uh, being part of the discussion. And uh, this is the part when the technical community um, will come in and the uh, committee uh, will come in and uh, they will uh, also double check that the idea and the proposal of the solution really fits um, with the ideas uh, of OpenStack and, and uh, design directions that we have. And uh, they will approve or they will give guidance on, on how to do uh, all these changes that you would like to make happen. So, uh, just very, very quickly, always focus. Uh, find your area, find the right people, and uh, just start doing. Um, because uh, it, it's really up to you whether you're able to join or not. You, you, have, to, you have to go there, you have to do. You, you should not give up, uh, never give up. As I, as I mentioned at the, the starting point of my talk, a minus two can happen, but it still does not mean that the API design or the change that you would like to do cannot happen. You just need to talk to people a little bit more, explain a little bit more that why you're doing that thing, why you chose that type of a design, and um, you, can, you can still make things happen. You need to be collaborative, you need to be professional, uh, never ever take anything personally. So that can happen that the other person who did that particular code review just really had a bad day because all of us have. I have a bad day every Monday, so um, that can happen. But they, they never meant it to the, the comment to personally you, most probably you never met before. They don't know you at all. They only know the code that you wrote or the documentation that wrote. They, they might didn't like it that much that day. It happens, but what you need to focus on that what's the content of that, that comment, that what's the technical issue with the code and what you can learn from it and still remain professional, remain friendly and collaborative because this is how um, people will accept you. Um, and this is how this whole community will remain a friendly and open and welcoming um, environment. And no silver bullets. Bullet. So what worked for me will might not work for you. I cannot tell you personally what to do. Again, I can only encourage you to just um, put yourself out there, uh, do it, uh, be eager. Um, and uh, show your willingness to, to join and uh, your care about the community, the code, the, the particular module that you would like to join to. And as I talk too much and drinks are available already, um, you, can, you will be able to find the recordings of, of this uh, talk. And let me see whether I can just go back to the very beginning. Uh, so you can see my email address, my uh, IRC nick on Freenode, my Twitter handle. So you can find me, uh, hunt me down, and ask questions if you have any. Uh, I promise whenever I have time, I will help you. And find more people uh, who you can talk talk to and who you can um, help you. So uh, enjoy the summit, uh, make connections, uh, talk to people, make friends, make colleagues, and enjoy and uh, have a great time at the booth crawl. Thank you.